Would that help? That make sense? Sure. You already had that test. You don't even have to remember that. No, no, you should. A little bit. But that brings me to today's topic. Facial muscles. And I like facial muscles a lot. Um, but it's kind of it's kind of a, a, a little bit of a boring topic in some ways because um, uh, facial muscles are mostly here to make faces. And so how do I introduce this that it's not just like a rattle down list of things, right? So I went into and did some research and, and, and you know went to Google or probably looked around and Googled. Googling thing is kind of cool. I mean, obviously our brain's owned by Google, but still, on our level, it's still kind of cool, I think. Um, uh, so I, what do facial muscles do? So one thing, of course, they eat. There's part of facial muscles that have to do with eating, so they have to close the jaw. And a little open the jaw, too. Um, but they also, for example, illustrate speech. So when I talk and I raise my eyebrows, that means something. I lower my eyebrows. That means something. It could mean I'm thinking. You know, the thinking happens up here, so there's, there's a lot of pain in there sometimes when you have to study all these terms. And have you noticed that studying is a little painful? Have you noticed that? Yeah. It really it is a physical pain in the head. I know. You've got to be you're kind to that. It doesn't mean don't do it, but it's, you know, we have to consider it. So drinking water helps. Sitting up straight helps the brain. Taking a walk helps that kind of stuff, but we have to acknowledge that it is a little bit painful. Because there's a lot going on. And we will talk about the brain. Uh, we also use facial expressions to symbolize, uh, uh, symbol symbolically, you know, when we Bjorn be Bjorn Borg and we bring the Wimbledon. That was so long ago. You, I don't know if you guys remember this guy. Uh, but that, like, expression is part of the, the, the facial muscles can do that. And we understand that this guy didn't just lose, right? He won. I know. So then I went a little deeper and we went all the way down to Darwin that says facial expressions, facial expressions a big deal of it, are the residual actions of more complete behavior responses and occur in combination with other bodily responses. So for example, if something really abhors you, you feel like, Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, that's, disg that's the, oh, that's, the, that's like you're barfing. Right? So that's that body responses. Something is so toxic, do you got to get rid of it? The thought is so toxic, it, uh, it's horrible, and I have to listen to that. That's what he means by that. So the face is sort of the place where a love comes together and is expressed that also happens inside the body. And then, this guy, it's still in talking. He, he, uh, him, I know. This guy, I don't know. So it doesn't matter who it is. But he was in the 60s, and he says the emotion is the basis of a human motivation, and the seed of emotion is in the face. So that's important. So we have emotions that are expressed in the face. So we have an emotion that's called anger. You know that one? The anger, right? Yeah, I do. It's, it's, like, it's really hard. How do you let it out? And how to let it out properly that it doesn't destroy crap? And, and how to not take it inside and don't let it out and then it explodes? We're working on that, right? Yeah, I'm working on that. Uh, but they found out if you have the muscle that works on anger, which is right here, this one, and you do Botox, remember Botox stuff? That they say by paralyzing the frown muscles, Botox short circuits the anger emotion itself. That was Newsweek. That's not some hokey pokey. So you might say, well, that's great. No more anger. But mm -mm, mm -mm, I mean, that's not the way it's going to work. It's going to go. Uh, but it's interesting. It's not just expression outside of an emotion. It's also inside. So fake it till you make it has a point. It's just you got to be authentic. You can't just fake it and it's all not real. And then you get smacked over the head because life catches up. So anyway, that's this emotional stuff. So that's kind of cool. So all of a sudden, facial muscles are important things. And then Ekman is another guy, and he went to Papua New Guinea, and he figured out there's some facial expressions that are universal with everybody.
because these people have never seen other people before they, he went in there. And so they all had the same things too. So I figured, let's go and look at these universal facial expressions. And so we have all these different emotions that come up. And there are seven of them that are universal. So we have one that's disgust. I just talked about disgust already. It's like you're basically barfing without barfing. So you're disgusted by an emotion. So what is that? The nose wrinkles and the upper part of the lip raises up to expose the canine teeth you think of a dog snarling. <clears throat> okay. Anger, you are real right here, right there. Don't they look the same? <laughs> I know, that's why. So that, you know, is, is, is the eyebrows, the inner eyebrows furrows down and goes down and the nostrils raise up and the eyes widen up and the teeth can be flashing sometimes. So it's, you know. Well, you don't go close to this guy. <laughs> Not less than two ago, but that was a long time ago. Um, happy. We like that emotion. It comes in true forms. It comes in a real, true smiling, or it comes in a polite smile. A crow feet smiling, or a non crow feet smiling. So that's that's a little bit of a question. But the quarters go up in the mouth. And if, if these go together and you squint a little bit by uh, being very, very expressive, the whole face expresses that, that's, that's the true smile, the polite smile. We can also call it, you know, you wouldn't know what you're doing and you're just looking at you with the eyes. You don't know what you're doing. So we can also call it the fake smile. But I think we often have to do this in the society because if people ask you in the street, hi, are you happy? And you say, yeah, I'm all right. They say, why, why aren't you happy? It's like, dude, I'm just having a fine day. I don't have to be ecstatic all the time. But once in a while, you know, then you just do that and everybody's fine. Fake it. Uh, surprise is another important one. And fear, they go pretty close together. They're most difficult to distinguish because they both open the eyes by raising the eyebrows and the eyelid. And then surprise also is a jaw dropping, like Lucy. We know Lucy, right? And then that's the fear. Sadness, mm -hmm. everything is goes down, the mouth goes down, the eyes go down. It's expressed, uh, the corner of the mouth and the eyebrows are pulled down. I know I want this, I will do. And then contempt, this is funny, right? So I made this when this guy was president. <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay. Because this is, the intent behind this expression is one of superiority. Uh-huh. May. It may be seen when someone is arguing, thinking they have the upper hand or a moral high ground. The corner of either left or right lip is pulled up and towards the ears. This is basically a half smile or a smirk. It's only natural occurring expression that is asymmetric. Some argue that contempt is the most significant indicator of negative energy. And I didn't make this up. I pulled, and he wasn't present yet. I didn't change it. But they, I also read that if you have that in your relationship, you might have to run out. And that was on page, I read that. I was not, I'm not making this up. I, um, but then, of course, we have that now he's present. And I'll leave it by that. And so this guy lied to me as a show on Netflix. And it's a really funny show. So I found this online. So he read this guy, this actor, re is, 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 reads facial expressions and solves criminal cases that way. He, he sees when people are lying. So it's kind of a cool show. They only made one season, and then they dropped it. But I put this in there because it's kind of, um, uh, it just shows what the different emotions are. So that then brings me to the muscles. Because, um, well, now it's relevant. What, what are facial muscles doing? They do all this different emotion stuff. So we've got to understand that a little better. But uh, fundamentally, when we look at muscles, muscles attach to bones mostly. Except for the face, but we'll talk about the mostly first anyway. So a muscle attaches to, to two parts of the bone. A muscle is, 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 for example, going from here to here. It spans and it attaches on two bones. And when it, well, the, the only thing it does, it shortens. It comes together. So when it does that, it's, we call that contracting. When it does that contracting, we bring the elbow in, for example, when the biceps contract. So it moves the elbow up. So muscles move bones around. 
and then that gives us locomotion. Sometimes it just holds bones together so we can stand upright and don't collapse in gravity or so. Like the, if you don't have these contracting, you always fall down. You don't think they're contracting, but if you're standing, they are contracting. Just rhythmically slow, and you don't feel it. In the face, some muscles, the muscles are just a lot of times attached to skin, not bone. Because we just got to move the skin around to make these faces stuff, these faces. Um, and so when we look at the bony attachments, we have one place of the bony attachment that stays still. Here with the biceps, it was the shoulder. That doesn't move. They call that an origin, like the foundation kind of thing. Where does the muscle come from, originate? Then it goes into another part, and that's the bony part that moves. Here is the forearm. We call that the insertion, where it goes, it anchors in. And what it does, we call the action. It flexes the elbow, it closes the elbow, it moves the elbow, that's that action. And then there's one more term, but we don't really worry about that in class here, it's called innervation. Each muscle has to be talked to by the brain. Brain has to talk to the muscle. Which nerve talks to the muscle is called innervation. In the face, it's kind of cool, because most facial muscles are innervated by a nerve that we call cranial nerve 7. That's a Roman numeral 7. And we're going to get to those cranial nerves when we get there. But you know, then you know that nerve goes to all the muscles in the face. For my test, you don't need to know that. But if you study the next class, it's nice to know that they're pretty much all the same nerve going through the facial muscles because one of your challenges will be, or is, you want to find patterns, you know, for like grouping. So you only have to study it once, and then you only study the exception. And you don't always study everything 100 million times. So yes, question back there? Yeah, I have a question about, um, I'm going to go back to the face real quick, or about this scan thing. Um, you said that you have like a stroke mm -hmm. or something. The nerve, yeah, the nerve is paralyzed. That nerve doesn't work. So the connection, the brain is not this, this sort of dormant or dead, depending, uh, that with the nerve that goes to that part of the face. Is there any way to get that nerve back? Or yeah, yeah, some stuff comes back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same with the limbs. Sometimes, you know, it takes a while to get them walking again. Okay. And sometimes even the talking. Because that's also happening up there. That's also a motor function, so to speak. Motor function, motor means things we do, things we express out. Sensory means things we bring in. Like you see with your eyes, that's sensory. You speak, that's motor. You move, that's motor. So a lot of that motor function can come back when, the, when they do rehabilitation. Yeah. Sometimes we have to rewire the brain a little and it doesn't come fully back, but they're doing a good job with that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Good, so I think that's it for that part of the slide. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> So these four things. So now we're, we're talking about the skull, muscles, and the skull. We have these two sets. We have facial expressions that we just talked about, these seven facial expressions. But then we also have to be chewing in, the, in there. We have to bring uh, close the mandible and be able to chew. So we have those uh, two sets. This is a nice picture. It's just those are all of them that we're going to go through pretty much. So let's start with it. Let's go through the facial, the frontalis muscle first. The frontalis muscle is also, AKA means also known as occipital frontalis or epicranius. You don't have to know those words. You just, I just want you to have them written down. That way, oh, this is weird. That way when you have the next class, you have somewhere where you can say, oh, that's the same muscle. OK, then I know it. Um, this doesn't have a bony attachment. That muscle is attached to the no bone, to the epicranial aponeurosis, and that's that white stuff up here. So it attaches right here, and then it anchors into the skin of the eyebrows, which is the root and the root of the nose. 
So it anchors right into here, basically. So it's like flat down here. If we look at the, at the model, it's the one right here in the front. The frontalis muscle is over the frontal bone. Ah, same word. Thank you very much. So that's already checked off. So you know that because you know the bone already now. And I know you do because you, you called it back to me when I asked you for the quiz. And now the only other thing is the question of what does it do? O is origin, I is insertion, A is action. It raises the eyebrows off and it wrinkles the forehead. That thing. I know, it's hard to do on the spot. <laughs> and when we, I got these little clips from also when they describe facial expressions more in detail. These are the little things. It's the inner brow razor or the, and the outer brow razors. It does both. So they describe it like that. So I put that up there too. It's kind of the action description what's up here. Uh, and then what I have here for all the muscles, I put, um, these are trigger point charts, trigger points, trigger points. Trigger points is a point that when you, when that point is irritated, it gives you pain somewhere else in your body. So that when the frontalis muscle has, has a problem in it, there's an X there, you can have pain around this area or also over here on the side of the head. You can do that too. And, and, and sometimes we have pains, and sometimes uh, we can then take the muscle and work the muscle a little bit, and the pain gets better. So what I do in my office, I have a chart where all these things show up. And I, and I look, and the patient talks about their pain, and I take this into consideration. I give them a little massage, and I squeeze that point, squeeze all the blood out of the muscle in that area, and the muscle has to relax, and then the pain often goes away. So just as FYI, I put all these little trigger points in there because, you know, body pains is kind of a real serious pain. And many times the doc doesn't know what to do with it. And I had a patient, he, he had a, he, I worked him really deep here. He, I mean, he was serious. He had to sell his business because of his injuries. And, 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 and ultimately I asked if we can have a doctor put some lidocaine in there or something to release the muscle, relax the muscle more. But then he said, the doctors don't, his doctor's not doing that anymore because it takes too long. I'm like, oh, crap. You know, so things are changing, and it's not always the pill. So this kind of stuff can be very helpful to understand, especially when, uh, you know, you've got pain. Oh, here's the pain pill. Okay. But it's not more to identify what brings me the pain. Is that the same for migraines? Like the, the My, not migraines? It can give you migraines, but I think migraines, we would want to go deeper into the bony structure too. And do you get migraines? Yeah, I can check it just to, out here if there's something that sticks out that's more bony and, and then I, it, no, or if it's muscle. Very often it's more the deeper neck muscles that cause that versus that muscle, if it's muscular. Whenever these pains, off, most of the time they, the, the body pains arise because some joint's not working quite right or some muscle in it. Or some muscle just doesn't function. You know, that's a... Then, oh, the thing with the facial muscles, you've got the best names in the face. Look at this. Corrugator supercilii muscle. And I do this so I scare the heck out of you. They're not going to be that complicated after this. And on the test, you don't have to memorize them. You just have to recognize them and copy down from the list. So this muscle, corrugator supercilii muscle, is, it corrugates, it brings his eyebrows together in the middle. This is your anger muscle. That's the anger muscle. So it goes from the frontal bone into the skin of the eyebrows, and it draws the eyebrows down the medial, making vertical wrinkles on the forehead. It's the frowning muscle. We do want to use that not just because we're mad, we also use that because we want to present, pre prevent more song glare. It's another reason you do that. Stay away some. Put on a hat. That's where we put the Botox in. I know it might get really bad, so I think I might have to put Botox in there. Orbicularis oculi muscle, that goes around the eye. Orbic, orbit, ah, orbit, that's a round sphere thing. Orbicularis is around muscle always. 
we have two orbicularis moths. So one is auricular, that's eye, and one is oris, that's the mouth. You know that from like oral stuff. So the front uh, orbicular is auricular is the one that closes the eyelid and makes radiating folds, the lateral angle makes the crow feet. Strong contraction can raise the cheek up a little bit. It helps pull on it. For the test, all you need to know is the muscle, write it down. You don't need to know all of this. You need to know all of this to understand. This chapter, these, these chapters are most important for me. You understand what we're doing, and then on the test, you give me the name of the muscle. But understanding is sort of the precursor that you don't have to study hard. Did you know that, right? Not under, that initial, I, sometimes it's mental lazy, sometimes it's just too complicated, but an initial not understanding of a thing will make it harder to, to study it later and put it into your head, into your brain cells, because you just memorize something. When there's understanding behind it, it's not memorization anymore. You might have to you know, write this name a few times down because it's like, what? And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, orbit, okay, I remember that. So for the test, only name the muscles. Do not need to know action, do not need to know origin, no insertion. And in narration, don't even worry about it. You could do that in bio 2 and in 20 AB, that's fine. Then we got a levator, look at that, levator palpebrae superioris. Ha, huh, we just talked about superior again. That means above. So that's the levator means lifting something, elevating something. We have a bunch of levator muscles coming up. So when you look at muscle names, one of the things that's interesting, some names describe action. So when you see this word levator, you know it's elevating something, so you know it's raising something up. What is it raising up? Palpebrae is a verb used for eyelid. So this is the, an eyelid, we have an eyelid on top and one on the bottom, it's just the bottom is much smaller. But we do have two of them. So the one on top they call the palpebrae superioris. So the levator palpebrae superioris is going to be the one that elevates the upper eyelid. There we go. Oh, levator levi superioris aliquinate. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's the elvis muscle. <laughs> so when he does the, snar the snarling up with the nose thing, that's what that muscle does. It's the longest name. It's not on the test. <laughs> Levator means elevate. Leva means lift. Superiority means above. Aliquate means wing of the nose. This thing. So this muscle, all this damn long name is to is a muscle that raises this thing on the nose up. That's the name of the muscle. So it's really. Of course, I like it. It's, I find it interesting after a while. But when you first get exposed to it, it's like, what the heck is that? Why can't they just say lifter of both the upper lip and the wing of the nose? Why can't they just say that? It's this little sliver. That's why I'm not even putting it on the test. Stuff I can't see well on the model, I don't put on the test. Nasalis muscle, now that is on the test because that's just the one on the nose. So that's the um, bridge of the nose. It compresses the cartilage of the nose. It does that. Nostril raises. Long nosed monkeys. I was in Borneo once. You know where Borneo is? It's like by Singapore. It's way over there, Malaysia, all this Asia stuff. It's the largest island, one of the largest islands in the world. You know, we're in the rich one. No, this is the nasalis muscle. It's right at the bridge of the nose, right here. It's right here. Bridge of the nose, whoops. Right here, that bridge of the nose, right on top of the nose. So I put this picture in because I saw these long-nosed mo monkeys in Borneo. They are almost extinct now. Uh, but they would like be on top of the canopies in the, in, the, in the trees when the suns come down, and they would sunbathe up there. And they're about this tall, and, and they would laugh each other out when one falls down. They would hold their belly and laugh, and I thought it was just most hilarious. And so that's why I put that up. I always have to remember that. 
And it's, you know, the long nosed monkeys. I know, it's crazy. Crazy stuff. Now listen after the nasal. Now this muscle, we're going into the levator levi superioris muscle. So again, levator, we know elevation, bring something up. Levi is lip. We already have one of lip muscle. Now we're talking about this lip. I want we understand as being a lip. Superioris, that's the upper lip. So this one is the muscle that lifts the upper lip up, right here, brings it up. See right there? I can't do that on the spot. I need a mirror <laughs> that I know what I'm doing. So we're attaching to the zygomatic bone and the infraorbital margin of the maxilla under the eye a little bit, right here. And then it goes into the skin on the upper lip of the mouth and it raises the upper lip up. Right next to it, is the zygomatic muscle and that starts in the zygomatic bone. Oh, thank you very much. Zygomaticus or zygomatic muscle goes from the zygomatic bone to the corner of the mouth and it makes you smile. So that's the smiling muscle. So guess that is certainly on the test. Star already. Ha! The buccinator muscle is the dimpler that is, um, goes from the back of the maxilla on the mandible back here and moves and goes into the round muscle that we're going to learn is around the mouth. So it's a deep, fat muscle and it's really th th thick because it's the main muscle that helps a nursing infant um, uh, suck. If you, if you have a, a nursing infant, you put a pacifier in that thing, you pull on it sometimes, you can hardly get that out. It's almost suction. That's that muscle doing that. So that's why trumpeting, compressing the cheeks is, is, is good for that. And I, I'm trying to figure out, if you don't have a dimple, what does that mean? It's not has nothing to do with the strength of the muscle, I don't think. That was a question about that. It's not, I don't think it has to do with strength. It's more the anatomy, the, the way it's, it's arranged in individual people, I think. Well, I know it's certainly nothing with the strength. Um, depressor anguli oris muscle. Now we don't lift. Now we bring it down. Now we're depressed. We're falling down. And so that's the depressor. That's something that brings something down. Anguli or is the angle of the mouth. So that's like the opposite to the zygomaticus muscle. They could have named the zygomaticus the levator anguli oris, that they call it zygomatic. Because it's much cooler name. What's the anguli again? The anguli oris is down here. It brings the corner of the mouth down. So it's right here. On the outside. We'll go through that model in a minute. See right here on the outside. Because then we have one that's on the middle, on the more midline, and that's going to be the depressor labi inferioris muscle. Well, I'll walk around in the lab and I'll show you on the, you know, I'll, I'll point them out, make sure you can differentiate those two. That's the pouting muscle. Uh, I would do that. And then the metallic muscle raises the chin, protrudes the lower lip, and wrinkles the chin, there's the thing in the front here. It starts from the mandible and goes to the skin of the, of the chain. So it's kind of weird because it's like it goes forward. It's right here. It's a goofy muscle. And the rhizorius, I put up because we, why are you so rhizorius? Uh, it's a muscle, a little skinny muscle that overlays the boxinator. And it pulls the corner of the lip onto the outside, laterally a little bit, just the corner and pulls it up. So it's not like a suction muscle, it's not a thick, strong piece of muscle, it's just a little sliver. And the platysma is a muscle that goes over the front, uh, uh, from the lower chin over the front of the, 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 the the neck, and then also a little bit of the front of the chest. It holds everything in. As we got all that sort of lift score a little bit, so we get a little chin stuff coming up. So on the model here, the frontalis is in the front. The orbicularis oculi is around the eye. Oh, we didn't have the orbicularis oris yet, huh? Look at that. There it is. The orbicularis oculi is around the eye. The orbicularis oris is around muscle around the, um, the mouth, right here. It's the kissing muscle. That one. 
purses and protrudes the lips. On the nose, the main one we need to know is the nasalis muscle. Yes. No, the one around the eye is called orbicularis oculi. Oh. And the one around the no mouth is called orbicularis oris. I know. They repeat themselves. Here's, you know, sometimes the name is how does a muscle look? And that's here, that's orbicularis around. So the nasalis will have to know. So that's the one I want you to study. Uh, the boxinator inside there on the cheek is definitely a, a, a muscle I'm wanting to work with. And then we got the, the zygomaticus right here. The, the levator labi superioris. Where is that? His one. We're gonna have this call right here on the on the face. We're gonna I'm gonna run around. Sometimes you have to make up a little bit and be aerial in a model, but that's okay. That's why I don't put every muscle on the test. Uh, so we have that, and then we have the lower lip muscles. We have one that brings the corner down and one that brings the lip down. We have those two: the depressor anguli oris and the depressor labia or inferioris. And so those are, that's the model we're going to use in lab, and that's also on the test. So as we get through lab, I'm going to walk around. Yes, ma'am. Why is it that you can certain muscles, I mean facial muscles, and others you can't? Why you can and others you can't? I would, I would test you that you can develop the other ones too. So it's just about judgment? Yeah, I think so. I think if you stand in front of the mirror and make faces, you'll get to them. <laughs> You know, go, that's where you go through all these, let's wrinkle the chin, and let's do that. You know, I think, I mean, and you know actors, some of them, they do that, right? To, to learn how to do facial expressions on the spot. Like one side, you can look better than the other one? Well, yeah, uh, I, yeah, one side I can blink better than the other side. Yeah. Yeah, I know, it's like, I, I, tra I train a long time, and it, so there might be some innervation thing too, but then I will go more into, the brain connection to the muscle versus the muscle itself as a strength. Because otherwise it would be like you have, you know, you flat here and you're puffy here. Or, you know, it would not look the same. So that's where I would go with that. Um, and that then brings me to the chewing muscle. So we have a few chewing muscles. We have a temporalis muscle, and we talked about that when we did the super temporal line on the, on the, um, uh, the Parietal bones, blah, you get me, I guess, hungry. Uh, and the temporalis muscle, here we need to know the, the, the muscle attachments really well, I think, to understand. We don't need to study them for the test. But we are here in the temporal fossa, the supertemporal line, and we go into the coronary process of the mandible. Remember that? What that is? The coronary process of the mandible is right, is right here, that one. That one on the side, that one. So when you look at the mandible, you've got the mandibular condyle in the back and then the coronary process more anterior. And that's where the masseter attaches. So, oops. That's where the masseter attaches. And so when it, it closes and you have the mouth open and it closes the mouth, it comes from here, goes down, it angles it that way. And it closes the mouth in this, pulling this upward. Because then the next muscle we have is the masseter, and the masseter is right here. And it starts on the zygomatic arch in the maxilla, here and here, here, and it goes into the angle of the radius of the mandible, so it goes down into here. So when that pulls, it pulls more this way. So the temporalis pulls a little more this way, and the masseter a little more this way. So we have multiple directions of pull to close that mouth really nice and be able to chew and pull forth in multiple different directions. Um, so these close the jaw, then we have pterygoid muscles, and two of them, one of them closes the jaw and the other one opens the jaw. And we know where you're going, this is way too complicated uh, for me to, uh, to go too crazy on. Uh, because, but what, one of the things, they're called pterygoids because when we started the sphenoid bone, these big things in the back of the skull, or the mouth, 
when we look from the front, we can't see it, but when we look there back in here, but when we look from the back, we can sort of see these, these things coming down. Those are the pterygoid processes of the sphenoid bone, and that's where these muscles attach. That's why they call them that weird name. And the medial pterygoid is basically the masseter is on the outside, the medial pterygoid is on the inside. It's the same from us perspective. I, I look at it like it makes the mass the mandible be a sandwich, the, the meat in between these two muscles. And so now we have the outside that helps close it. Now we also have one on the inside that helps close it. That helps. That's great. When somebody has TMJ problems out here, I take a finger cut, like or a, fi or a whole glove actually, uh, and I put my mouth and put it inside between the teeth and the bone, and I massage it. I go right. I tell them bite down on my. That's when they get to bite me. So I go right in here, go right in here, go and massage that and push on. It. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, and so that's that's uh, the, the one, and you can see them pretty nice here the way you can visualize them. So don't worry about the words, visualize it. We only need words if you can't make a picture. And then the lateral pterygoid, oh, I didn't take this out yet, is attached here to here, and it, it helps when it contracts, so it's. It's back in here. When it contracts, it pulls, it pulls the jaw forward a little bit, just a little bit, because it has to glide a little forward, and then we can open it up. And so that's what that muscle does. It helps, it helps um, open the jaw. These are not on the test. So if you have a little hard time with those, uh, don't worry about having to point those out. Those are definitely challenges for me. Also, for a long, long time, they were very challenge, challenging to understand them. Uh, but that's pretty much the short without having to be too detailed of naming whatever the names are of things. Um, because I do think it's important to understand we have four muscles that close to, to and open the jaw to chew. Because the TMJ problems are very, very prevalent problems. Um, and when I had a dentist come in, no, an ENT guy, he knows a stroke guy come in and he says, you know, do you, do, you, do, you, do you work on TMJ? I say, yeah. He said, what do you do? I said, I try to balance the motion out. So both sides move the same and not different. And I say, what do you do? And he says, I diagnose it. But that's not treatment. So I think it's important to understand a little bit of how that stuff works so then we can, you know, hopefully not suffer so much. <clears throat> so with that, are there any questions? No? Good.